everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to be touring my bookshelves. So I wanted to start off by saying that my book collection isn't the largest book collection, nor would I really ever want it to be. Uh, I did move to Alabama this year, and in that process I got rid of about a hundred books, I think. I have a few friends that teach middle school and high school English classes, and so I donated a lot of books to their classrooms. I also donated a lot to my local library at the time, although libraries can't take everything, and so all the rejects I gave to some friends and family. And then, unfortunately, the used bookstore where I lived before here went out of business, so all of the discarded books I then sent to uh, to Goodwill. So I got rid of about 100. I counted last night and I have about 270 left. So now my collection is pretty curated to me. I, I tried to keep books that I either really love or plan to read in the near future. I had a lot of books that I had read and didn't like and knew that I would never read again or books that I bought a long time ago and then just totally lost interest in and never got around to reading and didn't really want to read anymore. And so now I feel like my collection is more me. And I just want to say here at the beginning that I am in no way trying to say that you have to have a large collection of books to be, to, to be valid as a reader. I mean, ebooks are a thing. I love reading on my Kindle. In fact, I, I did a whole video about all the books on my Kindle. I think I actually read faster on my Kindle and and I like to be able to adjust the font styles and line spacing. I think that really helps me personally. So I love having books on my Kindle. I can take them anywhere. It's super convenient. And I also really love utilizing my library. Libraries, almost every library now has a digital app where you can get ebooks and audiobooks and it's fantastic. So please don't feel like if you don't have a lot of physical books that you are a lesser of a reader. I know that Instagram and BookTube and all of these social media platforms tend to really push getting every new release, getting all these books to your collection and having really beautiful shelves. And I'm very proud of my shelves. They, they make me very happy, but I'm by no means saying that that you have to have shelves like this to be a reader. To be honest, most of my shelves these days are being taken over by Funko Pops, and so pretty soon the books will just be a side note and the Funko Pops will probably take over. So you will also be seeing my Funko Pops in this video. I have about a hundred of them and I used to think they were so stupid and that I would never buy one and then my sister got me hooked on them and now I just, I'm, a little, maybe a little addicted, but I really, really love them. Speaking of Funko Pops, I do try to limit the the Funko Pops I buy. I only buy women and animals and Star Wars droids, apparently, because they're kind of like the animals of the Star Wars world. And I do try to stick to retailer exclusives or like Comic-Con exclusives for Funko Pops, but Occasionally, there will be some that I really love and, and will buy, um, even if they're not an exclusive. So, uh, yeah, those are my Funko Pops. I also wanted to say that all of these books I either bought with my own money or I got uh, as a gift from friends and family. I don't get any ARCs sent to me. I'm not that big on the social media platforms, and so all of these books are from my own money. I'm also not a member of any book subscriptions. I know there are a lot of monthly subscriptions like Owlcrate and Book of the Month and all, you know. I have a lot of friends who enjoy those, but I am a slow and picky reader. And so the books that I choose to have in my collection, I really want to have some sort of connection with them. I don't want it to be like a random book that I received that month, you know? Uh, the other question I thought you might have is where I got my bookshelves. I actually got them from Ikea. They are the first thing and so far the only thing I've ever gotten from Ikea. They are the white Billy bookshelves. And I did get the corner piece because I wanted to have it wrap around this corner. 
They sell a set that is a corner piece, but it was too large for my room because I have a window right here, and so it would have blocked the window. So to get around that, I just bought the three bookshelves separately, the two bigger ones and then the smaller one for the corner, and then uh, they sell the corner hardware separately and had my, my darling husband put them together. He spent like all day putting them together, but totally worth it in my opinion because they are perfect. Okay, and I, I'm i sorry, I'm not going to go through every book on my shelves uh, because that would take forever, and I, I know that there are a lot of really hardcore booktubers out there who do go through every book in their collection in book tours like this and like power to you, but I'm not going to do that. If you see a book on my shelf that I don't talk about and you have a question about it, be sure to leave a comment. I would be happy to tell you more about it, but in this video, I'm not going to stop on every book. Okay, so let's get into it. So I'm switching to my other lens so we can get all this in. My tripod does not reach this high, so I'm sorry that if the, the camera is shaky. These are my middle grade and my Sleeping Beauty Funko Pops, which I love. I love Sleeping Beauty so much. And um, this bookend here, actually, I got from Etsy, and I will link that down below. Most of these I have read, except for the Aragon series, even though I have the whole series. I wish I had the first two on hardback, but I actually got those when I was in middle school, so I've had them a really, really long time. I know, I still haven't read them, it's terrible, but I've had them really a long time, so I'm kind of attached to those copies in particular. And I have not read his Dark Materials. I started reading The Golden Compass earlier this year, but uh, I wasn't really into it, so I put it back down. I'll get to it at some point because I, I do really, really want to read it. Yeah, so these are my other middle grade books. Okay, so I switched to using the tripod for the second shelf because it was a lot easier this way. So here we have my YA paper paperbacks. A lot of these I have read, most most of them I have read, some of them not, and a lot of these I have had for years, like my copy of Looking for Alaska I've had for a really long time. Uh, Crank and Burned are just like classics from middle school. Serafina looks really beat up. Um, so I, I honestly don't know if I prefer hardbacks or paperbacks, but I like the way that hardbacks look better but I think I prefer reading paperbacks, but I'm kind of picky about them. I like them to be like big and floppy like this. Um, and I don't like glossy covers. Like this one has a glossy cover, which I don't like. The cover itself I think is beautiful, but I hate that it's glossy. So um, I scooched you over a little bit so that we could get the rest of the shelf. But uh, again, these are just my YA paperbacks and Sally Stitches who I moved up uh, to the shelf. She's not normally here, but I moved her up because it is you know, like Halloween season and I, I like looking at her. This is the diamond edition, by the way, from Hot Topic. I got her last year. Actually, my sister uh, got her for me, so I don't know. She's she's really beautiful, I think, and, and really special, so yeah, she she's right there for now. I do want to point out on this shelf, I do have Alice in the Fly, which is not a paperback. It is actually a hardback, and this book doesn't get a lot of attention and it is surprisingly good. I have it here because it is shorter than most of my other YA hardbacks and pretty thin and I just had room on the shelf so I put it here. But yeah, really, really loved this one. It is kind of unsettling in a way. Um, I think it is in a diary format, which I don't typically like, but it worked really well with this, with this particular story and I think it's really well written and just like, uh, just a, a totally good YA. It doesn't get enough attention. Okay, so here we have my third shelf on my left bookcase. These, again, are more YA. I guess Harry Potter is technically middle grade. I, I did want to talk about this a little bit because, I don't know, JK Rowling is such a controversial topic right now, and I do not support her transphobic beliefs. And I am not going to be purchasing any other content from her. However, Harry Potter does hold a special place in my heart. And so it's kind of, it's just a really complicated topic. So I didn't want to get rid of my books because I still love the story. 
and I want to be able to separate the art from the artist where possible, but I have moved them over to the left of my shelf here so whenever I film they're not in frame because I don't necessarily want to promote them. I'm only really showing them in this video to be honest and to explain to all of you guys what's going on with JK Rowling. <laughs> if uh, you are unaware of it right now, I will try to link some resources down below um, because I still see a lot of people you know, supporting her and buying Harry Potter merchandise and yeah, it just doesn't sit well with me. So again, I'm going to keep my Harry Potter books, um, but I probably won't be talking about them too much on my channel. I do want to tell a, a cute story, I guess, while I'm here. Uh, so I owned Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows uh, because I, I got those at the midnight releases when they came out and so those were really special to me, but they were the only two I owned because before then I had just read my sister's copies. She had owned all of them. Uh, we got them secondhand. But my husband, who is actually not a reader, actually owned one through five. And so when we got married, we were able to put our copies together. So we now have a complete set and I, I believe they're all the same editions. But yeah, one through five were from him, and then six through six and seven were from me. And actually, the the first four are like really, really nice. You could tell they hadn't really been read. <laughs> like first printing of the American edition, they were beautiful. And book five is actually he he got from some like garage sale. It's really beat up. Uh, but that's okay because Order of the Phoenix is my least favorite, uh, so I don't mind if it is a little beat up. That's fine with me. Uh, we also have Spyro and Sparks hanging out right here. So, I mean, I wanted to put my dragons close to each other since I have Maleficent up above and it just made sense to put a dragon by the Harry Potter books because they also have dragons in them. I don't know. I think way too much about where I put my Funko Pops. So this is the rest of that shelf. Again, we have Toothless, <laughs> another dragon. We have all my Marissa Meyer books and they're kind of just here because I really like them and I wanted them to be more prominent than, than the rest of my YA books. And she just, I have a lot of her books and so it made sense to have them on a separate shelf. And I also have the Six of Crows duology, uh, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. And I gotta slide you over a little bit more. Uh, Language of Thorns in that corner. I actually have not read Language of Thorns. The cover is beautiful. I love it so much. And it, it has a lot of like short stories of the Grisha world. And so I will read this at some point. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay, so now these are my YA hardbacks. I got rid of so many YA books when I moved, but these were the ones that either loved or, or really want to read. Flame in the Mist, actually, right off the bat, I have not read, but the cover, I just love. I absolutely love this cover. And it sounds really interesting. It is one that I want to get to soon. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. The Wrath in the Dawn, I actually really liked this first book. Um, I did own the second one, but I got rid of it because I didn't like it as much. But this first one, I love. And we have Katniss Everdeen. This, this was actually a anniversary gift from my husband this summer. I, I love the hung Hunger Games and I had my eye on this Funko Pop for a long time but she was really expensive but yeah I finally got her. And then I have my John Green books and the Half Bad trilogy which I have only read this first book but the covers are just so pretty. I love them so much so I, I'm hoping I can get to the other two. Sliding you to the second part of the shelf we have the Laura Jean To All the Boys I've Loved Before series. These are just kind of like guilty pleasures. I really love them. I also really love the Netflix adaptations. I think they're great. This is The Road and We Are the Ants. I have not read yet, but really want to. We have Jane of the Volturi. I actually bought this right after I finished Midnight Sun because I didn't have any Twilight Funko Pops and felt like I needed some. So yeah, I got her. I'm gonna move you over, Jane. And then The Loneliest Girl in the Universe. I actually read this on audiobook earlier this year and I really really loved it. It was totally different from what I expected but still really really good so definitely check that one out. And 
that inevitable Victorian thing, which is really hard for me to say, but this might be my favorite cover in my collection. I really, really love it. It's by E.K. Johnston. Love her as an author, as a person, just in general. Really, really love her. Her books don't get enough attention and they're really good. This particular book I didn't love, but again, the cover is just gorgeous. E.K. Johnston actually wrote the Ahsoka book, so of course we have the Ahsoka book right here. Um, I really wish I had it on the same shelf as my Ahsoka Funko Pops with my current setup. That's not possible right now, but they just released two more Ahsoka Funko Pops. Anyway, we'll, 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 we'll get there. So Ahsoka book right here. Okay, now these are my YA hardbacks continued. We have uh, again by E.K. Johnston, we have Queen's Shadow and Queen's Peril, books about Padme. Sorry, that is not in frame. I'm, I'm doing a really bad job at this. I'm so sorry. I really like the first one. Still have to read the second one. Super looking forward to it. It's, it's one I would like to get to by the end of the year. Um, it really bugs me that We Are Okay is not the same height as these other uh, hardbacks, but it is probably my favorite one of my favorite YAs and so I had to have it. I actually read a copy from my library and then went and bought myself a physical copy because I loved it so much. And then we have my Rainbow Row books. This one actually, Lion Cat, I'm going to move you over for a second. Thank you, buddy. This Lion Cat here is actually my very first Funko Pop, so he is very special to me. But anyway, this book, Carry On, uh, you might have noticed that I had the paperback version and that the hardback version was not published with this cover. When Wayward Sun came out, I was really worried that they wouldn't match. And so they actually gave away like 500 or a thousand or I don't know, a limited quantity of just these dust jackets. So you could cover up your first edition and make them match. And I was lucky enough to get one in time. I'm so happy because they look much better now. But this is what the original cover looked like. And mine is actually a signed edition, I think, where did I get this? Did I think my friend sent this to me. I love Rainbow Rowell. She came to St. Louis when I was in Missouri, but I, it was like a school night or something and St. Louis was like two hours away and so I wasn't able to go. <laughs> and I felt really sad about it, but then my friend got me the signed edition. So yeah, it's like super special to me. And then I have The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. I've not read this and actually it should probably go on my Schwab shelf. Uh, I will probably move it there at some point and it seems like it, it would be a good fall read. I probably should read it this month, maybe, if I get around to it. Uh, the Kyoshi novels, again, some of my favorite. Lion Cat, I'm gonna move you back to where you belong. Yeah, and then Eliza and her monsters, again, one of my favorites. And we have the Twilight series, uh, Sans Midnight Sun because the cover doesn't match and I think it looks kind of hideous. The Host and Little Black Bird by Rattled the Shelves on Instagram. So those are my YA. Okay, so I had to go handheld again because my tripod does not go this this far down, but this is my last shelf on my left bookcase, and these are my graphic novels, comics, and manga. So over in the corner here, we have all of the Avatar Last Airbender and the Legend of Korra library editions. I absolutely love these. I've read most of them. I'm currently reading Imbalance and I still have to read Ruins of the Empire. I just got this one, so really looking forward to that. And in the corner here, we have my Art of the Animated series for Avatar and then books one and three of Korra because books two and four are really hard to find. Although I think that they are re-releasing those in in a different binding. I'm not sure if they're hardback or paperback though, but um, if you're interested, you might want to keep an eye out for those. Then I have my Attack on Titan Colossal Edition. This combines the other uh, paperback editions one through five, and I would really like to get the other ones because I have a lot of these little bindings, but they take up a lot of space. And these, they're actually really nice quality, super big. Yeah, I love them so much. So I really, really want to have the rest of them. And then I have Saga 1 through 9. My husband actually called this, he explained this to one of my friends as an obscure graphic novel series. And I'm like, this is one of the most popular graphic novel, comic series, whatever you want to call it. Like, ever. 
<laughs> and it's so good. And it is really um, graphic and violent, but so, so good. So if, if you have never heard of this, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't or if you've been wondering whether it's good or not, yes, I totally recommend. And this first volume kind of, it was a lot to take in at once. Um, but once I got to the second volume, I was in love with it. So yes, definitely check this out if you haven't already. Highly, 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 highly recommend. The only other graphic novel series that I actually read, I guess, is Monstrous. And this one is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous, the artwork, if I can show it to you. It's like very Asian inspired and it, this world has like a matriarchy and they have different um, types of people and some are like half animals and some are more animals. It's hard to explain, but absolutely gorgeous. Would definitely recommend that one as well. And here are some of my other comics, graphic novels. A lot of these I have not read and like really want to read. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I am in love with Attack on Titan, so again, I have a lot of those, and I have more kind of tucked behind there. Yeah, I, I'm just a big fan of Attack on Titan. Hey guys, this is Editing Emily just popping in to say, and you will already know this by the title of the video, um, but I decided to split this into two different parts because it was a lot of footage, and yeah, no one wants to sit through over an hour of me talking about my bookshelves all at once. So it makes sense to just split it into two different videos. So I'm thinking I might re-record the second half so that I can get the audio uh, a little bit better and the shaky cam a little bit more stabilized. Learn from my experience, you know, like a good YouTuber or just person. What am I saying? Emily, get, get it together. So sorry that you only got half of my bookshelves <laughs> in this video, but I promise I will bring you the rest of them and the rest of the Funko Pops in next week's video. So thank you for watching and here is the outro. Okay everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe if you want to catch my future videos and yeah, thanks. Bye.